There's a big problem in the Big Apple, and it's not the only city facing this dilemma. You've heard of Italy's Leaning Tower of Pisa, and you can't forget San Francisco's tilting Millennium Tower. But did you know that New York City has its very own slanted skyscraper? That's right, the skyline that never stops evolving has developed a bit of a predicament. This is one seaport, or 161 Maiden Lane, 60 stories of prime real estate on Manhattan's eastern waterfront. At first glance, it may look like any other construction project downtown, but look a lot closer and you'll find it's actually leaning by 8 centimeters or 3 inches to the north. Now that may not seem like a lot, but it's enough to leave a brand new skyscraper abandoned before it's even opened. Construction's in a stalemate, and no one wants to admit fault. It was supposed to have beautiful south and east facing views, and it's turned into one of those symbols of like what can go wrong in a project. With a busy highway on one side, a city packed full of high rises and busy New Yorkers on the other, intense media scrutiny and millions of dollars in real estate deals at stake, the pressure is on to fix the tower before it's too late. So what exactly caused it to lean, and will it ever stand up straight again? It's no secret that New York City's real estate is both expensive and competitive, and when it's parkside or waterfront, the price tags and prestige get even higher. The nation's largest rental market saw the median monthly rent tick up. 161 Maiden Lane was going to be no exception. Overlooking the East River in downtown Manhattan, the 204-meter tower was set to be the tallest residential skyscraper on the eastern waterfront, with apartment sales ranging from 1 to 7 million US dollars. But after several construction delays and accidents, it's safe to say the skyscraper has, well, had a string of bad luck. Today, construction is stalled, and the building only has about half of its windows and finishings, so it's a bit of a blemish on the New York skyline. There have been issues throughout its entire development, but it's the allegations around the most important step of construction that are generating the most interest. The building's foundation. Now, for any non-engineers out there, that's the part of a skyscraper that sits at and below ground level and provides a firm base for it to rise on. Essentially, before you build up, you've got to build down. But assembling a skyscraper in New York City is unlike anywhere else. Because you're, you're, you're developing in such a hyper-dense environment, there are certain constraints you have that you wouldn't have in, let's say, Dallas, where you have a lot of land to play with. Here you're building, it's all vertical engineering. Now, all that vertical engineering takes time, expertise, and of course, money. To make something like this worth it, developers need to make sure the tower can bring in more money than they used to build it with. Of course, that was expected to come from luxury apartment sales, and the current economic crisis has left people looking for places to invest. In 2022 alone, stocks were down over 18%, bonds were down 13%, and real estate was down 26%. One survey found that Americans making over six figures are living paycheck to paycheck. But major institutions like Goldman Sachs are pouring hundreds of millions into alternative assets not correlated to struggling stocks, like the contemporary art on offer at Masterworks, the platform that lets you invest in multi-million dollar paintings without breaking the bank. All of Masterworks' 11 exits to date have returned a profit to their investors. With those kinds of results, there's a waitlist to join over 630,000 users, but we're giving the B1M's viewers special access at the link below. Now, to really understand the allegations around this building's foundations, we need to get you up to speed on a few things. So buckle up for another little round of Engineering 101 with the B1M. Foundations are complicated, and we're going to massively simplify here. Please don't go building your own foundations off the back of this video. The basic job of a foundation is to provide a firm base for a building to stand on and to transfer the vertical weight or load of that building down onto planet Earth. Sometimes that can be done onto great, strong rock or soil at ground level. Sometimes you have to go a little deeper, and sometimes you have to go very deep indeed. Every construction site in the world is unique, so things vary. Small buildings like homes might use block or strip footings, that's basically shallow cubes or strips of concrete with a slab on top. Other small structures might use raft foundations, and very big buildings often use a form of piling. 
That's where steel reinforced concrete columns are driven or poured into the ground to reach good material or bedrock deep below, transferring the weight of the building down. Sometimes that's done with a basement where piles are used to form the walls. Sometimes there are piles that go beyond a basement. Sometimes there are pools or whole subway stations down there, but you get the idea. Like we said, not easy. Now in major cities with lots of tall buildings around, kind of like New York, you can't just go digging a hole wherever you like. With all those heavy buildings putting pressure on the ground, any excavation would take away some of the earth that their weight is resting on. It would interrupt their so-called angle of incidence. To avoid the risk of buildings collapsing, teams digging basements need to create retaining walls first. That can be done by driving sheets of steel into the ground, or creating a wall of piles first and then excavating, bracing the open hole as you go. Now at this point we could bore you with a lovely bit of top-down basement construction, but we've done that before and to be honest it's not really relevant. The main thing to take away from all this, as you've hopefully gathered, is that foundation engineering is governed by one very important material, soil. Soil has a bearing capacity, that is referring to how much poundage of force it can handle. First, that soil gets tested. Definitely they have a, a little parking lot or something and they dug down into the ground and they have tested the soil. Then the engineer that has designed the building is considering the weight of the building, is considering the weight of the furniture, weight of the people, weight of the glass, also weird forces like wind force. If a soil is too weak or not up to standard, it can be treated to improve its strength, sometimes by adding chemicals or by mixing in other material. But the more common approach is just to go for the more expensive, but often much more reliable piles. At 161 Maiden Lane, Pizzerotti, the building contractor, sued the developer, Fortis Property Group, saying it cut corners. According to the lawsuit, they took the soil improvement route rather than the piling route like many other buildings had done nearby. Pizzerotti claims that details of the method used were not revealed to it before it started building the tower. As construction continued, this allegedly made the building improperly settle and caused it to tilt roughly 8 centimetres. There's been a lot of legal drama over who is ultimately to blame and the case is still being battled out in the courtroom. Pizzerotti claims the building will continue to lean if the foundation isn't fixed, which could create a risk of falling facade panels, corrosion, or even elevators failing to remain vertical. As a result, the company claims it terminated its contract with Fortis. Fortis acknowledged the building had what it called an alignment issue, but said it wasn't a cause for safety concerns. The company also said Pizzerotti never actually terminated its contract and instead continued working. We reached out to both parties for comments on all this, but didn't get a response. If the lean was caused by a force that came from the wind, it was acting on a skeleton, empty, and it was able to push it that way. The moment you put glass on that, what do you have now? You have a ship sail, like more force from that wind, and it will move further. And if you have something broken, especially in the case of concrete, concrete breaks, it's done. This could explain why there were reports that some of the glass facade had appeared to be removed in 2020. While that could be a temporary fix, a long-term plan still hasn't been laid out, largely because the case is still being fought out in court. The leaning of the building is a symptom of the problem. So all the articles I have read they are not saying what the problem is. If you don't know the problem, you cannot give a remedy for it. So I, I, I really can't. If the problem is a broken foundation, you're done. You have to dismantle, refix the foundation and go for it. Over in San Francisco, engineers have proposed fixing Millennium Tower's lean with underpinning, installing 18 new piles into the building's foundation deep underground. Now, underpinning is a very common procedure, especially on domestic properties, but it's extremely challenging on a skyscraper. Fortis claims all it would take to fix 161 Maiden Lane is a simple redesign of the glass facade. But until we know the root of the problem, we won't really be able to work out the best way to fix it. 
To be very clear, and especially for those nearby, no one's claiming the building's on the verge of collapsing right now, and it's understood to be in a safe condition. But the longer it sits abandoned, the more expensive it gets, and nobody wants to foot that bill. According to The Real Deal, nearly all prospective buyers have pulled out of their deals, and hundreds of millions of dollars have already been sunk into the construction work. It remains to be seen if this leaning tower can ever stand straight again. In the meantime, it sits unfinished on the city's skyline. For all of the drama of this building, countless other projects around the world proceed without any issues every day. It's a powerful reminder of just how important the construction industry's work really is, and how billions of us take it for granted. This video was brought to you by Masterworks, you can learn more about that at the link in the description. There's also the chance to dive deeper on this and the other topics on our channel over on the World's Best Construction Podcast, available now wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to lean in to the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.